I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, we gather together today on the fourth Sunday of Lent, and uh, it's the first Sunday that uh, since our parish began that uh, I've had no congregation uh, at least right in front of me. Uh, and that uh, is a great sadness, but that is uh, a necess necessity during this time of the coronavirus. Uh, I am grateful, though, that uh, we have the technology today that I can uh, uh, come into your homes through the videotape. So uh, I hope many be able to plug in that way and still be part of uh, our faith community experience. We gather today on this fourth Sunday of Lent, uh, reminded last week of uh, Jesus being the living water. Uh, today we're reminded that Jesus uh, helps us see, gives sight to the blind, and uh, next week we'll be reminded of how uh, he is the, the source and promise of new and everlasting life, even stronger than the power of death. As we place ourselves in the Lord's presence, we do now ask for his mercy, his love, and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite and the humble of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call and free all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal word made flesh, the very splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees does God see. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are 
these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Inverted pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But, eat, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back to see. His neighbors and those who had, been, who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay in my eyes and I washed, now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such a thing and do such signs? And there was a division among them. And so they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, 
and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most of us, uh, probably like myself, just first heard of the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, a couple months ago when it became a story in Wuhan, China. Perhaps we knew when we heard it that it sounded serious for that particular area uh, and posed a possible threat of people from there travel. But uh, we probably didn't give it too much more thought or attention at that time. Many of us remember the Ebola virus, the swine flu epidemic, H1N1, SARS, mad cow disease, and other diseases which posed very credible threats, but probably did not alter the daily activities of most Americans. I believe it's fair to say that most of us, or maybe all of us, have never experienced anything quite like we are experiencing with this coronavirus. Also, if we are honest with ourselves, uh, most of us probably did not see this coming. Despite some stern warnings, especially from some medical experts and from people overseas. Ironically, this Sunday, we hear about an encounter of Jesus with a man born blind. On the surface, Jesus offers him physical healing, but he really offers him and all who witness this miraculous healing so much more. It would certainly be fair to say that this blind man and no one else really saw this miraculous healing coming, but it did, in fact, come. The focus then seems to shift to those who thought they, who, who's, who, to those who, though they have sight, continue to refuse to see. The question throughout is about who has the greater sin. And the answer clearly comes from Jesus himself, who says, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, we see and so your sin remains. We are encouraged with the help of Jesus to see with eyes of faith. This means seeing our sin and our great need, our overwhelming need for redemption and a Savior that is in our midst. We won't be cleansed if we never see both our sin and our need for this Savior. A few weeks ago, like many, I wondered if perhaps the media was making too much of this coronavirus story. I feel a little ashamed to admit that now, but I know I'm in good company. Like many others, despite the warnings, I just didn't see this coming. But I sure see it now. And I feel it, too. I have a heavy feeling all week, kind of like the feeling I had uh, back in... 2001 on the September 11th attacks. I pray that now we all see a need to defeat uh, this common enemy with a commitment to uh, safety of all people. May we get the correct information and may we take this seriously. May we stay connected in all the ways that are safe and most importantly, may we stay connected to our faith. The hardest part of this disease is that it isolates us. And it's a good and natural desire to want to be together. If we are healthy, may we keep finding acceptable ways to reach out to each other via telephone or electronic devices. And if we are ill, then please, for the sake of everyone, 
do not expose yourself to others and please seek out the appropriate medical attention. And I thank all who have been doing so because I think many have taken this quite seriously. The words of St. Paul in his letter to the Romans might prove helpful. They were helpful for me anyways. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I pray that uh, we and you all remain faithful, my friends, and uh, also hopeful. If, we, if there are special needs that uh, are not being addressed by our faith community, uh, please let us know. We want to do our very best to respond to any special needs that exist. One thing for sure, uh, we are clearly all in this together, and that should be our greatest strength. That should be our rallying cry. We're all in this together. So uh, we may not have seen this coming, but uh, we do certainly see and feel it now. It's very hard to preach to an empty church. I miss all of you very much, and I long for the time when I'll see your faces back in these pews again. And hopefully that won't be too long, but we don't know how long it will be. That said, I do believe that collectively we are striving to do the right thing, to defeat this invisible enemy. So let's stay connected to our faith. Let's stay connected to each other as best we can, and all work together and pray together for solidarity in these trying days. May God bless you. I pray for your health, safety, and total well-being, body, mind, and soul. Dear Lord, together, let us say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear Lord, having listened to your holy word and reflected upon its meaning, especially in this uh, difficult time, we now place before you our prayer intentions. For Pope Francis, Bishop Malloy, and all religious leaders, as they do their best to shepherd their people through these difficult days, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, national and local leaders, as they strive to provide direction and counsel through this crisis, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are afflicted by the coronavirus, their families and all their loved ones, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all medical personnel, doctors and nurses treating the sick and working for a cure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have lost employment and all the lives that have been upended by this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and vulnerable and those who care for them daily, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed, having died with Christ, and they return to life with him, and all who have died recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this Mass, Dolores Caker, Jane Ann Peters, 
Charles Campbell, the living and deceased members of the Skoglin family, and the people of St. Catherine Drexel Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for the prayers we list in our parish intention book and prayer chain, that they may be united to those of our patroness, St. Catherine Drexel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, we ask you these and all our prayers as always through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as fitting for salvation of the, all, all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out to you, and without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, that with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, St. Catherine Drexel, our patroness, St. Anthony of Padua, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us extend the sign of peace by offering our hearts, if not our hands. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of a lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your wonderful lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of a heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus, COVID-19, and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. And may we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. In him I found a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look down, on, look on to you, and morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done.